This is the first time Microsoft is bringing the Tech Ed event to the Middle East. What has been your experience so far? It's been fantastic. You know, we've been talking about this for almost a year now, trying to figure out, like, you know, hey, when should we do a Tech Ed? Because Tech Ed is a way for us to have a two-way dialogue between Microsoft and some of our core customers, including developers and IT professionals. And we've been thinking about, like, you know, hey, when do we start this in the Middle East region? particularly given the growing importance of technology and the growing adoption of technology that we see, both among the IT pro community and the developer community. So we've been talking about it for a couple of years, and we finally decided last year that, you know, hey, let's start it this year. And we were initially a little bit worried about, like, you know, hey, what is the response going to be kind of thing? But the response from people has been just fabulous and fantastic, so much so that we've had to, like, you know, increase our registrations and stuff like that to make sure that we could cater to all the people who wanted to be a part of Tech Kit. So I feel very, very good about the response so far. Can you talk us through some of the key focus areas for the developer community right now? Great. So first of all, like you know, I'm working on a, or my team, I should say, is working on a couple of new products that are coming down the pipeline. Visual Studio 2010, .NET Framework 4, uh, the next version of Silverlight, which is Silverlight 4, and the next version of Expression Studio, which is Expression Studio 4. Okay. And uh, we've been working on Visual Studio 2010 and .NET Framework 4 for the last several years now. And from my perspective, we are almost close to the finish line. It's, in fact, we are so close that I can actually smell the finish line, so to speak. Because in the next you know, six weeks or so, we'll be done with these products and we'll be bringing these products to the marketplace. And uh, to me, this is an exciting milestone for Microsoft and for the developer community around the world, including Middle East, because with Visual Studio 2010 and .NET Framework 4, we got some fantastic you know, set of new functionality and features and value proposition that is coming in. Just to give you a, a quick high-level summary, there are three things that we are going to be delivering with Visual Studio 2010 and .NET Framework 4. The first, we are going to provide tool support for the broadest set of platforms from Microsoft, including Windows 7, Windows Server, Windows Azure, Office, SharePoint, SQL Server, and the like. So we really have a broad-based platform support with Visual Studio 2010. The second thing that we are doing is to make sure that you have a fantastic experience when you are inside the IDE, which is where you as a professional developer are going to be spending a fair amount of your time. And the third thing is we want to make sure that if you are working in a software team, you, know, you may be a project manager or a program manager or a designer or an architect or a developer or a tester or whoever it is, we want to make sure that we deliver a great set of integrated tools for you as a team to come together and work effectively and collaboratively. And we think on all these three dimensions, we've made some huge progress with these products. And like I said before, in the next six weeks or so, these products will come into the marketplace, and we are really excited about these products. Can you give us some insight on future Microsoft technologies? Sure. The big trend, you know, there are a lot of different trends that we can talk about, but if I have to pick one trend, that trend is you know, compute, cloud computing or software plus services. We've been talking about this for a while now. You know, people are used to like, you know, running software either on their sort of local desktop, local device that they have, or in their local data center that they have if it is in a business environment. And we are seeing a trend where more and more people want to think about what it means to run software as a service, okay? And it isn't like, you know, either software or service. It's going to be software plus services because we think there is a ton of value if you can marry software that is running on a local environment with the value of software that you can get running on the cloud as a service. And the big advantage, particularly in this economic climate for our customers around the world, it's, it's, it's to say with cloud computing, you're going to pay as you go, as opposed to having to pay for it all right up front. So you, know, you can you know, either increase or decrease the usage of software, depending on how well your business is doing or not doing at any given point in time, and know that you pay only for what you use. So if you think about any IT organization, they have a set of fixed costs and a set of variable costs. The, keeping the fixed cost as low as possible and keeping the variable cost, you know, be flexible so that you know you can dial up or dial down as your business grows is something that our customers care about a lot. And I think cloud computing is going to enable you to do that. So that's one big trend that I see happening. You know, recently we launched Windows Azure, which is a cloud computing platform from Microsoft, where we expect you know both Microsoft as well as our partners and customers to be able to build additional services and applications that run on the cloud. And we are going to see that like, you know, be a huge thing moving forward in, in sort of in a software space.
Thank you.